Hi folks, Andrew Jelina here again, host of the Underserved Podcast. As part of our on-site podcast series at the Farmhouse in Plymouth, our next interview is with Joe Kennard. Joe is an innovative modern architect who has executed some of Boston's most interesting projects. His work often combines the beautification of real estate with conservation and social justice. Joe's calm, deliberate manner and disciplined approach proved to be a perfect rudder for Paul as he considered a master plan for the farmhouse. Let's talk to Joe and hear how he harnessed Paul's passion and energy into a thoughtful vision for long-term growth and success. He's trying to give back and help individuals out and help people come together. Um, these are all things that I liked about his vision. It wasn't about what Paul wants or how much money can he make or can he do this or can he do that? He's thinking about, you know, people from different backgrounds coming together, uh, sharing thoughts, sharing resources, sharing ideas. My name is uh, Joseph Kennard. I'm an architect in Boston, Massachusetts. And how are you involved at the farmhouse? That's a good question. My first introduction to Paul was through a connection with Leah and my wife. We had dinner out together. Paul's immediately <laughs> engaging and energetic, and I liked his enthusiasm. And we immediately kind of saw eye to eye on some of our, uh, I mean, I'm jumping ahead a bit, but social issues and stuff like that. Um, my architecture firm does a lot of work with um, nonprofits and um, helping youth get a leg up. And uh, when he started telling me about what he was doing with the farmhouse, he had just purchased it and had some visions and um, started saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this other thing. And I bought a geodesic dome. And I'm like, well, where are you putting that on the lot? And he's like, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to put it over here. Maybe I go, and he's listing all these things. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you should think this through. <laughs> and kind of have a master plan so you don't put it here and then it's in the way of something else you're putting down later on and think about the whole program for the place. And, um, you know, I was just making suggestions for him. I wasn't trying to say that I'd be the one to do it, but he's like, oh, you got to help me with this, man. So um, we started chatting. Do you do like a lot of residential, commercial? What do you typically do in your line of work? So we've been in business for 22 years and, and counting. Our bread and butter has been residential. My firm is small. We like doing uh, intimate work. I like having my fingers deep into projects. And uh, we do a lot of environmentally conscious work. So whether it's low energy use, um, durability of the structure, and efficiency of materials and local sourcing materials, reusing existing materials, because a lot of times we're reworking with an existing structure. So we'll salvage stuff out of that. And if we don't use it, we give it to another organization that finds a home for it. So we're trying to not fill landfills. We're trying to do all the components with um, what it takes to put a new house together or an addition. Um, so that's been our bread and butter. We do do commercial projects when they're interesting. We just did one for Future Chefs where we took them from a small industrial building that had carved out a little spot from and got them into a place that's probably four or five times as big as that was so they could grow their organization. And they teach city kids, high school age, um, about the culinary arts. And they uh, give them a leg up into the workforce and they call it knife skills and life skills. Hmm. So even if the kids don't end up going and cooking, um, they still learned that they can do things, they can affect things, they can believe in themselves. And uh, that's that's what's important to me. Someone did that for me when I was really young, and it got me to where I was. I started believing in myself. Um, so uh, anytime I can have an opportunity to give that back, I do. So we do work for Artists for Humanities, um, Future Chefs, the People's Academy, who's a trade organization, um, teach kids to get into you know union apprenticeships. What do you think about the vision that Paul has for the farmhouse? I just think he's awesome that he's trying to give back and help people come together. Um, these are all things that I liked about his vision. It wasn't about what Paul wants or how much money can he make or can he do this or can he do that? He's thinking about, 
you know, people from different backgrounds coming together, uh, sharing thoughts, sharing resources, sharing ideas. Um, and, and I like that. And he's taking it to another thing that I can kind of grab onto cultivating relationships, but also from the ground up where he's talking about farming and having, um, different types of farms that the kids can work on and adults can work on and harvest it and learn how to take that harvest and bring it to market or take that harvest and take it to another level and cook with it. So he's got a teaching kitchen component to it, you know, so feeding people. So it's nice because it, it's all kind of available in this one location. Um, they can have meetings here to discuss their ideas. Um, they can grow here and they can cook here. How do you think the big vision kind of gets translated into the program, the assets, the use and activation of the various elements on the property? Um, we are in the early stages of that. So what I like to do uh, first and foremost, because Paul's like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? You know, he's that guy. He's like way out ahead of me. And I'm like, slow down. I need some information. We need to do this right. So we've done what I call programming, which is listing all the things he is hopeful for, for the property. And, um, and also checking with local zoning and codes to make sure you can do this stuff with the property. Um, once we have that, that's what I call the playbook. It's like the rules of engagement, or, you know, if you're playing football, you got to certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. You need to know those before you go onto the playing field. From this point forward, we're going to start to put together what I call the master plan. And that will be showing how many structures are we adding to the property? What are we doing with the existing structures? How do they get used? How do they get repurposed? What events can he do? What educational uh, components does he fit into say the garage, the existing garage over there and um, event spaces that he can have out in the yard. So we're starting to see what that comes together. And I'm going to make that visual, I'm going to show it in the site plan of here's how everything's connected. Here's how you get from one to the next. Um, here's how people move through their event. So we'll be doing vignettes, little pictures of what the renovated space looks like, you know, are there tables? Are there chairs? Are there cooking facilities in it? Um, is it just an open space with a big couch? Um, does it have uh, television and communication devices so you can communicate with people offsite? Stuff like that. We'll be creating those visions um, so that Paul can see it all and have a roadmap to kind of move forward with. You know, what can we get done this year? What can we get done in five years? And then what's the 10 year plan? Now, one of the things you mentioned was kind of reusing or repurposing industrial items so they're not going to a landfill. How do you maybe see that integrating into the experience here? What do you think the ethos is here at the farmhouse about that? There's a few underutilized structures here. Um, there's one on the front corner when you're coming in. It's tucked away. It's hard to see. So there's a few structures on here that we can repurpose. There's not a lot there to take away from them. So I think we might be sourcing stuff from elsewhere to bring here, whether it's a abandoned shipping container or uh, he talked about, and I think he already got them, a bunch of um, casks for brewing beer. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I have yet to see those, um, but those probably will get incorporated into one of the event spaces. So a lot of times we'll use reclaimed materials and give it to craftsmen that can remake it into whether it's as simple as a table or an actual wall from mm -hmm. salvaged wood and metal from other projects. So it might be nice to start to have that flavor in here and people seeing, oh, I never thought of using that thing like that and making a common household item out of it. I think there's a lot already inherent into what's existing when you pull up, mainly the trees and the woods and the ocean view that reveals itself. So there's a little bit of awe in that. And maybe, maybe that's not common for some of the people coming here. So it'll be a surprise. How do you make them comfortable with that? I think the structure needs to be inviting. I think 
you know, just where you land has to be obvious, so comfortable and welcoming. Something that seems more engageable, something that seems more more known. And, you know, it's already kind of there. It's got a New England style to it, so that should be um, comfortable to people that live here and maybe people coming from out of state are familiar with New England architecture. So we'll probably emphasize that. And again, I think using reclaimed and repurposed materials might also help with that engagement. And, you know, I'm probably borrowing this from Paul. It's his vision and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, but you know, it's a place where people can come together from divergent backgrounds and, and chat and see that, you know, these are real people. They're, they're not elite. They're not inaccessible. He talks about having Bill Gates here and, and some kids from local school here at the same time. If that happens, that'd be wonderful. Um, so that they can see that these people are just human beings and, and we're all talking about our common future together. I think that would be kind of the ideal and the dream uh, if we can make that happen. <laughs>